Hey, I'm here in Istanbul. I'm about to head out, go to the Grand Bazaar, go to a few mosques. I have a ticket for a boat ride. So let's go and explore the city. The neighborhood that I'm staying in is Fati, which by the way, the name Fati, it means conqueror. So there was Fati Sultan Mehmet II. He's the one who overthrew Constantinople and then the city became Istanbul. Here you can get some do domates for 25 lira. About two years ago, the country of Turkey, or should I say Turkey, yeah, sent a memo to the rest of the world and said, we're not Turkey, we're Turkey, yeah. So I've started to see that on a lot of maps, like Google Maps, for example. It's a little noisy here during the day. Lots of animals on the streets here in Istanbul. I'm currently headed down to the tram stop. It's about a 10 minute walk from my hotel. The hotel's been good, by the way. It's got a little kitchen in there, which I haven't really used too much, but I do use the fridge and the coffee pot. All in all, the hotel has been a comfortable place to stay. When the garbage truck comes, there's actually like a claw on the truck and it grabs onto this thing. So the dumpster is underground. You can step on there and throw away your trash. And so instead of having above ground dumpsters, a lot of times you see this. I'm headed to the tram, which is over this way. Um, but over here, it's actually where there's this mall and that's where I go to the gym. It gets the job done. The music is too loud. Also, the toilets and the showers were out of order for the past three weeks. Otherwise, it's been good. My main complaint is just the music's too loud. I don't know why every gym is pumping loud music these days. And also on the top floor of the mall is the movie theater. Tickets cost $6.66. The movies are in English. They have Turkish subtitles. You can get a water and a popcorn and your movie ticket for less than $10. And in the basement of the mall, the grocery store. And I think it might be one of the more fancy grocery stores in the area. And that's where I've been getting my groceries. So I get some tuna and beans and stuff like that that i can just open it and eat it i was just dealing with these bird people they'll just come over to you and try to give you the bird seed and then of course after you throw the bird seed then they say money 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 you owe me money as the tram line is right in front of us i was in this area just the other day and i got stopped by a cop and uh he just said where from and i had to show him my driver's license i didn't have my passport though but yes the driver's license oh get on the tram it's actually pretty convenient you can just swipe your credit card and that's the same thing on the bus like I just jumped on the bus one day I had never tried it but I figured out oh, what the heck I'll give it a shot and I swiped my card and it worked I've arrived at the stop here as we can see this area is starting to get pretty busy I'm just kind of following the people back this way sure enough here's the entrance to the bazaar we had to go through a little metal detector to get inside. I didn't realize that this was all indoor. Apparently there's roughly 6,000 shops inside. I was in this area, not in the bazaar, but I was in the area on Sunday. The bazaar is actually closed on Sunday, so it's something to be aware of. And I guess today it closes at seven o'clock. So you've got the spice shops, you've got the textiles, you've got chess boards and all kinds of trinkets and there's some canes and jewelry and clothes and shoes. As advertised, it's a little bit of a labyrinth in here. You've got all these intersecting crossroads and all these spice shops look the same. They're kind of like pristine and white inside with all the lights just shining bright on the tea and on the spices. Nice guy at the spice shop, he was just showing me the Turkish delight. He said, oh yes, please, please come in, have some Turkish delight. So of course you've got all of the designer brands available. You can get your Gucci bags and Louis Vuitton. We can get some Air Jordans. Let's see if we can find some Air Jordans and how much they cost here. I feel like they cost about $12 is what my expectation is. Of course, there are many spice shops here. There's many lamp shops, there's many textile shops. It's almost like the same store it just keeps repeating which might be good for you if you're looking for a bargain. You can come here and say, well, the guy down there said he'd give me this rug or whatever for this price, can you beat it? So I just asked one guy how much for the Air Jordans. He said that 2,900 Turkish Lira. That's over $100. So I don't know, maybe I look like a mark. Maybe they're real. What do you think? So for that pair of Air Jordans that says 1985 Oregon collection, he's telling me it's 8,000 Turkish Lira, which is almost $300. And then I said, well, 
It's not real Nikes though. He goes, well, it's special collection. We have the special corporate collection here. <laughs> so I think he's dancing around that question. Let's head outside. We'll find the $12 Air Jordan. I think there's over a dozen entrances to get in and out of here. People lining up right outside to get some food. About 14 minute walk from here. I'm headed over to a mosque called Suleimania, I think. It has a really nice courtyard and a really nice view of the Golden Horn. So we're gonna make our way over there. There's also shops along the way. And then once you get into that area, it's a pretty busy area with more shops. And maybe we can find Air Jordans for $12. Not that I'm gonna buy them. So right back here, I did find the shoes. And uh, he started out, I said, how much are they? He said 1,000, which is about, let's say 30, $35. And I said, can you do 300, which should be about $12. And as I was walking out of there, he said, okay, okay, 650. And I kept walking. He said, okay, okay, 500. And I said, are they real? He goes, yeah, they're real fake Air Jordans. Anyway, I think if you want to get the real deals, you got to come outside of Grand Bazaar and just the streets that are around. And then you'll get to the real shops where they'll give you the deal. Here we can find t-shirts for 150 Turkish lira. It's about $5. A little bit of a traffic jam developing on the hill here as we continue to the mosque. I just came from that way. I mean, I head over this way. I think this is the courtyard of this mosque. The name of the mosque, I'll do my best to say this, Sulemania. And it's quite breezy here because I think you could say there's an ocean breeze. So check out this view. I said ocean breeze. It's really breeze coming in off the water. This is the Bosphorus Canal over here. So here's the Bosphorus and then this is Asia. And then over here to the north, this is Galata Tower. And then this is the Golden Horn in here. So just outside the entrance here, you come inside. There's a little courtyard, which is all enclosed. So we're going to go back out the way we came here. I'm going to head down towards the Galata Bridge area and we're going to cross the Golden Horn using that bridge. It's about a 10 minute walk. I can start to see the waters of the Golden Horn as there's quite a bit of traffic that's not going anywhere here. As I'm winding my way down there, there's lots of side streets that open up, has all these shops and little restaurants. We're starting to get some of that smell of the water. I arrived at the water's edge. So from here you can get on your Bosphorus dinner cruise or you can catch a ferry that goes over to Asia. I don't know if you could see it but in the water I could see a bunch of little fish just swimming around right here on the water's edge. And then this one definitely goes to Asia. So after the boarding area to the boats which is right back there then we're now on this plaza and you can see there's the ticket station. If you want to get a Bosphorus tour you can get it right there. There is a walkway underneath so we can go on the bottom level here and walk across the Golden Horn and walk across the Galata Bridge. I was walking on the west side and then I crossed over and I'm walking on the east side. And then above me, the people fishing, you can see their rods up here. We'll see if they pull anything out of the water. They'll be doing it right in front of me. So before there was a bridge, can you imagine there used to be a chain that would span all the way across from one edge to the other. And that was back when it was Constantinople. And that was there for defense to keep ships that weren't wanted from going into the Golden Horn. And so when Constantinople fell and became Istanbul, that was in 1453, what they did was in order to get around the chain, they took their ships up on land and they drug them about a mile across and then they dropped them into the Golden Horn, just bypassing the chain. It's obviously a lot of work, but at that time, the city was under siege, and now they had their ships more surrounding the city, and so it was just a threat from all sides. And they no longer had this protection of this chain across the Golden Horn. So you can come here, fish off the bridge. Before the city was Istanbul, it was Constantinople, and it was established as a Roman capital in 330 AD by Constantine the Great. And it stayed Constantinople all the way until 1453, when it was conquered by Fatih Sultan Mehmet. So I've made my way across the Galata Bridge, now heading to Galata Tower. I expect maybe it's a 10 to 15 minute walk. There was an old Galata Tower. That was actually where the chain used to be connected to. And then that tower got destroyed and Obviously, they must have rebuilt it. 
we've turned the corner and there it is. All right, here's the entrance. Here's the line. Looks like I came at the perfect time as the line goes over here and then I think it folds back on itself and maybe it ends over here. Meanwhile, the ticket office is straight in front of us. I just talked to some Americans that were at the front of the line from Irvine, California. He had a Anaheim Angels, or maybe now it's a California Angels of Los Angeles of Anaheim hat on. <laughs> and uh, anyway, they said they'd be waiting in line for maybe like 30 minutes or so. Right now it's 5.30 and my boat leaves at seven o'clock. So I think I'm gonna not wait in line for now. There's a really busy street over here that we're gonna go check out. And then we're gonna get on the tram and we're gonna head down to Aya Sophia area and that's where the boat is at. We arrived on this street here. It's one of the maybe busiest streets. Well, certainly one of the busiest streets here in the area. My Turkish is not very good, but if I had to try to pronounce the street name, I think I would call it Istiklal. It's lined with restaurants and bars and clothing stores and maybe a souvenir shop here and there. I'm gonna leave the busy Istiklal street behind me. I'm gonna head over to the tram and go over to Hagia Sophia. As I've been here, I've learned a few Turkish words. If you want to say hello, you say merhaba. If you want to say thank you, it's teşekkürler. Probably took about 15, 20 minutes on the tram and now I've exited at Sultanahmet station here. So the metro stop was just up here and then you can walk down onto this plaza that opens up. What I'm walking on now used to be where the Romans would race their horses so this is where they would have the chariots and then here's blue mosque right here and then directly in front of me here is this egyptian stone you can see the hieroglyphics on the side this was brought over by the romans in the year 300 a.d from luxor egypt there is a free tour down here by the way and in order to find it I just opened my Google Maps app and I typed free tour in and then from there it led me to the website. I think it's free tour of Istanbul. And my guide from that tour actually sold me this ticket for the boat ride for 300 lira. So it's about 10, 11, 12 dollars. And he said that the boarding area for the boat is right over here, kind of behind Hagia Sophia. So we're gonna see if we can find that. You've got the hop on hop off buses right there which maybe that'd be worth it if you just want to cruise around the city but behind us there's blue mosque and then right in front of us is Hagia Sophia and then over here there's a fountain some gardens some benches and there's also some restaurants around you can come here relax get some tea get something to eat so here's Hagia Sophia and then here's blue mosque oh and then also just across the street here it's the entrance to the Basilica Cistern. And you may have seen that cistern because when I went down there, the first thing I thought of was, oh, this was in the Da Vinci Code. I think it was in the third one called Inferno. During Roman times, the cistern was used for water filtration and the water was used at the palace and some of the other buildings in the area. And there's 300 and some columns down there. There's the head of Medusa down there on the base of the column. I think there's actually two Medusa heads down there. And not only do they film movies down there, like I said, Inferno, but also From Russia With Love with Sean Connery was filmed down there. And they also have concerts down there because the acoustics are supposed to be very good. And even when I was there, there were a few musicians playing. The cistern costs about $4 if you're local. But if you're a tourist like me, it costs about $20. As I'm continuing to look for the dock, traffic is going great. The walk was a little bit longer than I thought it would be, but now it's gotten to where the boats are. The Bosphorus is a natural strait, goes through Istanbul, it connects the Sea of Marmara in the south with the Black Sea in the north. Istanbul historically is a very well positioned city. It's one of the only inlets to the Black Sea and also is on the Silk Road coming from Asia, from China, bringing the spices from India and then going into Europe. Istanbul feels to me a lot like a doorway to the east as I was coming from Europe.
saw the most expensive real estate in all of Turkey. And it's nice. You can see the topography is hilly. So when you're on the boat, you can look over, you can see all the hills and the trees and the buildings. The boat leaves every day at 12.30, 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. The boat tour lasted about an hour and 45 minutes. Like I said, it costs about $12 right outside of Hagia Sophia now. I heard that it's open until 11. We'll see if we can get inside. And in order to come inside, of course, the women have to have their head covered. You have to have your legs covered. You have to take your shoes off. If you come late at night or early in the morning, there's no line. The chandeliers are so low because they used to have to light them with a torch. So they would just have a long arm and a flame. I also want to see the mosque during the day, so stay tuned. We'll come back tomorrow and see Hagia Sophia. Hagia yeah. Sophia behind me, and then right in front of me, we have this fountain and then the blue mosque. So we'll go there. At Hagia Sophia, if you don't have a head covering and if you're a woman, I think you have to buy one. But at the blue mosque, they will loan you one and then you return it at the end. Inside of Blue Mosque, a beautiful courtyard. morning it's the next day Let's see if we can get in line here it doesn't look like it's too long and the line for blue mosque is usually shorter than the line for Hagia Sophia it only took about 10 minutes to get inside construction of this mosque was completed in 1617 you can see the blue tiles and the blue colors and it's a specific kind of blue it's a light blue that you'd probably describe as turquoise it's a French word it means something like Turkish or Turkish blue they used to put ostrich eggs in the chandelier to keep out pests, specifically spiders. The eggs would be hollowed out, the yolk would be drained, but they thought that just the remaining smell would help keep away the spiders. And they still do it to this day. Let's walk two minutes and go to Hagia Sophia. It's almost 10, you can see quite a big line has already developed to go inside of Hagia Sophia. It took about 17 minutes waiting in line, getting there at 9.50. That's what they say, come here early. You can see the difference between daytime and last night. Last night there was really no line, but couldn't see too well inside here. The church was built by the Romans in 536, and at that time it was a church. And then after Constantinople fell to the Sultan, they turned it into a mosque. The diameter of the main dome is about 32 meters, and the height is either 55 or 56 meters tall. How long do you think this took to build? Believe it or not, it only took five years, but there's 10,000 slaves working day and night. The city of Constantinople was conquered in 1453, and then it was ruled by the Sultan, and Islam was the new religion. And so the minarets, the towers, were added in the 15th and 16th century. I feel like they say Hagia Sophia here instead of Hagia Sophia. The name Hagia Sophia means holy wisdom. Let's catch the tram and head over to Galata Tower. We'll go across the bridge. You can buy a Metro card right here. And I guess these are students who are helping people to buy a Metro card. And I guess they're just part of a tourist agency and maybe they're practicing their English. But I found that you don't even need a Metro card. I just scanned my credit card and it costs like 70 cents. During World War I, the Ottoman Empire was aligned with Germany and they lost the war. And so in 1923, the Sultan was exiled and a lot of reform took place during that year also. They used to have Arabic as their alphabet, but they changed their writing system to a modified version of the Roman alphabet where here they have 29 characters. I guess they needed a few extra characters to express all of the sounds in the Turkish language. There's another language that is close to Turkish. Apparently they can understand each other, kind of, and that is Azerbaijanian. And one of my tour guides told me that the second most spoken language here is, believe it or not, German. He said everyone has a cousin in Germany. We turn this corner and then the tower's directly in front of us. Oh look, there's virtually no line. We saw yesterday this was wrapped around all the way and doubled back on itself. So there's a tip, get here early, as opposed to at 5 or 6 p.m.
pretty good views behind us looking across the Golden Horn back into old Istanbul. Here's Hagia Sophia, Blue Mosque, Galata Bridge, and then here's the big mosque from yesterday, Sulaymaniye. We're looking north, this is the Bosphorus, and so somewhere in here is where they pulled the ships across the land and then dropped them in over there. The tower was built on a hill with a view over Istanbul in 528 as a lighthouse by the Byzantines in order to observe possible dangers and guide the ships. It was destroyed in 1044 and was rebuilt by the Genoese in 1348. It's been used as a dungeon, an observatory, a prison, and a fire watchtower. There's also a belief here that a couple who climbs to the tower together for the first time will get married. Well, let's make our way back to old Istanbul. We'll cross the Golden Horn and cross the Gullata Bridge. And we'll go find some Turkish food and see how good it is. As I was in the Gullata Tower, I came across some Americans. We were talking about our experience here. If you're planning on coming here, this might be something that you'd want to know. We talked a little bit about how it's not quite as orderly here. It's a little more chaotic, you could say. For example, when I'm waiting for the elevator, people show up out of nowhere and try to push their way onto the elevator instead of waiting. When I'm buying groceries, I'm standing at the self-checkout. People will try to walk past me and go to the far checkout machine and then they'll turn around and try to come to the near one when that opens up. <laughs> I mentioned this to one of my friends who I met recently. He's from Turkey and he said, yep, welcome to the Middle East. I've arrived at the restaurant. It has some really nice views overlooking the Golden Horn. I usually try to stick to fish or chicken. But today I'm going to try this lamb kebab. It's about $8.15. Well, here it is, the moment we've all been waiting for. A look at my salad. Okay, here's the kebab. Well, it's good. It's very flavorful. I like the peppers in the meat. Gives it a good amount of kick. There's the right amount of spice in there. When I first ate at a restaurant here, and I wanted to order a water. I said to the young man working, I said, water, water. And he kept looking. He's like, water? I said, yeah, water. And I was trying to think how else I could say it. And he goes, oh, uh, what, what here? What here? That's of course how he learned it in school here. So be aware, you might need to order a water. Or if you want to say it in Turkish, the word is su, which is pretty easy. Well, we did it. We saw the Grand Bazaar. We saw the Sulaymaniye Mosque. We saw Hagia Sophia. We saw the Blue Mosque. We saw the cisterns. We went on a boat ride, saw the Golden Horn and saw Galata Tower and even had some Turkish food. As always, I'd love to hear from you below. What was your favorite part? Or if you just want to say hello, I read all the comments and I'd love to hear from you. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Or as they say here, Teşekkürler. Thanks again. See you soon.